So from fishermen to fish, the Gulf oil disaster could have an effect for years to come. Scientists are trying to get a handle on the impact, but it certainly isn't easy. CNN's Rob Marciano is live now in Gulfport, Mississippi this morning. So, you know, Rob, you've been talking to scientists about how the fish are faring and what are they telling you? Well, they're worried about the fish offshore. We've been talking so much about the wildlife onshore and the oil coming ashore, but in many spots like here in coastal Mississippi, uh, the oil hasn't gotten here, and they certainly hope uh, th that it never will. But out there in the open ocean, uh, you better believe this oil slick is affecting all sorts of fish, from the biggest fish in the ocean to ones you can barely see. Oh, wow. This is cool. What exactly am I looking at here? Right now you're looking at some larvae of uh, bluefin tuna, basically bluefin tuna babies. Dr. Eric Hoffmeyer is a biologist at the University of Southern Mississippi Gulf Coast Research Lab. He has a team of scientists currently exploring Gulf waters near the oil slick. They've been out there for about four or five days and it's, it's a planned 12-day trip. Right now their research vessel is near the southern edge of the spill. Biologist Jim Franks reports from the ship via satellite. Loop current temperature today was 86 degrees. It's awfully warm. Turns out that loop current getting all the press lately does more than just move warm water and potentially oil toward Florida. The current is a breeding ground for lots of marine life, including rare bluefin tuna. You've got lots of nutrients entrained into, into the loop current, and so it becomes a, a signature for these animals to, uh, to spawn around. The Gulf is only one of two known bluefin spawning grounds. The other is in the Mediterranean. Hoffmeyer says bluefin tuna's sushi popularity, especially in Asia, has driven down the population 82 percent. The problem we have is that they're tremendously overfished. Another concern for Hoffmeyer's team is whale sharks, the largest fish on the planet. They can grow up to 60 feet long, and they also live in the Gulf of Mexico. The, the oil spill is in prime uh, essential whale shark habitat, primarily feeding habitat, and we're about in prime whale shark season. So this is bad timing. Very bad timing. You know, drop it in Aquatic here. toxicologist Dr. Joe Griffith has been studying the oil and the dispersants closely. We have a saying in toxicology, you know, the dose makes the poison. Anything is toxic in high enough concentrations or for long enough exposure period. The lab here is full of last year's samples. Biologists wonder if this year's larvae will come back as healthy. I would think that a little guy like this, even if he gets into a little bit of sheen, that's, that's not going to make it easy. It's not, and most of these were collected uh, in the top 10 meters of the water column, so most of these larvae are, are at or near the surface of the water. So what does that uh, make you think about when, when you, you start to hear about Sheen getting into the, the loop current where, where these guys are? It's, 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 it's not going to be good. I mean, it, it could have tremendous impacts on, on bluefin as well as other species. You know, the cards are stacked against those little tiny larvae, about uh, one, two, at most 3% of them actually make it and contribute to the population, so any sort of oil will certainly uh, affect them. As far as the, the, the whale sharks are concerned, uh, they, they're considered a, an indicator species. If their numbers go down in the Gulf of Mexico, well, that's an indication that the overall health of the ecosystem here uh, is, is not good. So we'll just have to wait and see on that front. You know, Federico, we've been using uh, Gulfport and the Mississippi coastline as kind of a home base here to launch uh, our wildlife reports. But I just, I do want to tell you uh, that the beaches here have not seen uh, any oil, at least any concrete forms of oil, and they're beautiful. So there's not much in the way of tourism here, possibly because of uh, the message that uh, may be misconstrued, but it's a gorgeous day here on the Mississippi coastline, and you certainly want to uh, come down here and help the Chamber of Commerce. But as far as what's going on out to sea, uh, you will just have to wait and see there, Frederica. Uh, generally, if a fish goes through oil and then gets out of it, they think two, three, four, five days, and they flush the system. But the larger fish, they're, they're not sure about that, and uh, they're very worried, of course. Of course. Right. All, right. All right. Rob Marciano, thanks so much in Gulfport, uh, Mississippi. All right. Well, next hour, we're going to be talking to a marine expert who actually worked on the largest oil spill in history, and he says this disaster could be even worse in so many ways.